Today I will show you how to sharp your images in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. What is sharpening doing to your images? Well, basically any method you choose in Photoshop to sharp your images are doing the same thing. Photoshop tries to detect the edges on your images. Edges are the area of high contrast and try to increase that contrast a little bit by making brighter pixels a little bit brighter and darker pixels a little bit darker. Of course, that's the luminosity and the color contrast. So that's about the theory. Let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. All right, guys, let me show you the first and most obvious method how you can sharpen your images and that is with the sharp tool. Uh, let's go here to this uh, drop icon, click and hold and use a sharpen tool here. Okay, that's the triangle. And now you can just, let me zoom here a little bit to see the details, and you can just go and sharp the image a little bit. And it's basically a destructive way. And if you use the Control Command Z before and after, you see a lot of details are sharper. And you have the strength effect here to control the amount of image, the amount of detail uh, you want to be sharpened. Or you can use a tablet like I'm using, and with the pen pressure you can control this slider here, this strength effect here. Okay, and if you want to use this method but undestructively, just go and make a new empty layer and check this sample all layers. Okay, and now try to sharp some parts of the image that you want to be a little bit more sharper. Okay, something like so. And now, as you can see, before and after, before and after. I will emphasize this a little bit just to see better before and after. Okay, let's see before and after, before and after. And this is how the Photoshop makes a new layer with a lot sharper details. Right, and that's the first method. I almost never use this method, but of course, it's not bad. You can use it if you like that method to sharper with, sharpen with the brush. Okay, the second method is to use the unsharp mask. How to do that? Let's duplicate with Control Command J the layer just to have that. This is a copy. Go to the filter and then sharpen and unsharp mask. And this is really nice dialog box here. You have three different sliders. Okay, let's zero this out and let me explain you what does three slider uh, does to, to an image. Okay, first one, it's the amount of effect you want to sharp. It's basically the contrast slider. Okay, and let's choose the second one is the radius. And that's the radius of edges, of uh, the radius of pixels that it's affected on those edges you want to sharp. For example, you see the edge here. Uh, it's uh, Edges are the area of high contrast in Photoshop. Okay, and this is really high contrast between the skin and this dark part. And for example, if I put a 50, 50 pixels, something around 50 pixels, and put the contrast a little bit more, you can see the halo effect because I, I have the radius of 50 pixels affected on this edge. And we don't want that, of course. We want to uh, decrease the radius to be something, every image, of course, is different, depend on the image resolution, but to be something before the halo effect. Or if you want to sharp only small details here, like these uh, hairs on the skin or just this mud or coffee or I don't know what is it and you will use something lower if you want to sharp a little bit bigger areas you will use higher uh, radius but in this image there are a lot of small details and you don't want to use big radius and the amount is the basically contrast slider here you want less contrast or you want more contrast okay and the threshold, threshold here it's really really helpful slider if you want to tell Photoshop, please don't affect the areas where the, the, the contrast is a little bit lower. Affect the areas only where the contrast is higher. And now when the threshold is at zero, you will affect everything, the higher and lower contrast areas. And if you increase the threshold slider, for example, something like 10 or 13, you will now uh, get result like uh, this part where the contrast is really low and this part of the lips where the contrast is really low, will not be affected. If you see before and after, the skin here is not affected. And this part, uh, darker part of the upper lips, 
uh, will not be affected. But this part where the contrast is higher, it's affected. I will zoom just to see. Okay, like so. Before and after, before and after. And you will see the skin here, for example, it's not affected. But now if I go back to zero, everything will be affected. See, the skin, this part of the lips, the, the uh, teeth here. And of course, the noise is affected too. You, you're increasing the noise in the image. And with this slider, you can avoid that. You can tell Photoshop, all right, I want everything from level nine and above. And that's really, really nice. And then you just say, okay. And you have sharpen, sharper image. Okay, before and after, before and after. If you want to do this same technique, but undestructively, that you can always go and change the amount of sharper sharpening, you can do next thing. Let's delete this layer, all right? Copy, again, Control Command J, right click and convert this layer to smart object, all right? And then use this method again. Now I will use the third method and that will be high pass filter. Okay, I will use the smart object to show you how to do that undistractively. Okay, filter, other, high pass. And high pass filter, it's this great thing. And now you need to see anything that you see through. If it's on zero, you will practically see only the, the empty gray layer. And if you increase the radius here, you have only the radius slider. Everything that you see here now, it's the details that will be sharpened. Okay. And if you increase too much, you will have this halo effect and you don't want that and everything will be messy. All right. You will use something around maybe for this image, 1.5 pixels. All right. And now you need to put this layer into overlay soft light or maybe linear light blending mode, depend of the uh, strength effect you want to achieve. For example, the soft light, it's the softest effect and see before and after. I don't know if you can see on your screens, but I can see it's really, really soft. Overlay, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit better before and after, especially if you watch this part of the lips here, after, before and after. And linear light, it's the hardest result, okay? Before and after, before and after. And if you want to see before you apply the high pass filter, how will be uh, how the effect will be applied on the image, you need to do something like this. Let me just uncheck this. Like we are uh, going from the start, you can make this uh, smart filter or not. I will go back to the smart filter just a second, right? Use this layer, uh, make it overlay or linear light on, or anything you want. It's a mess now. All right, then go to the filters, other high pass. And now you can see directly how the effect will be applied on the image, right? And now you can put 1.5 or even 3 to make some messy result or even less, 1.1 maybe. And now you cannot see before and after because before it's this uh, mess result. But you can now control directly on the, on the image result. Press OK and that's it. And you cannot change now the, the amount of sharpening, but on this smart filter, you can double tap on that and you can, sorry, on high pass here, double tap on that and you can always change the amount of details you want. For example, let's leave it something like so, press OK and you suddenly decide, yeah, it's too much. I don't need too much. Well, just double tap on high pass here and decrease that. And it's so easy. All right, let's go to another image, maybe on this one or maybe on this one. This is the cuter one. All right, and let me show you another method that I use really rarely, but maybe it's good to know. Maybe you will use it more often, I don't know, but it's a little bit better with the halo effect. You can get away with the halo effect a little bit more than the high pass filter. You need to duplicate the layer, you uh, duplicate the layer, then you need to put the opacity to 50%, okay? First duplicate the layer, then opacity 50%, then you need to invert the layer, control or command I. And you will have similar like high pass filter when the high pass slider, radius slider is at zero, actually 0 0.1, all right? And then go to the filter blur. Yes, you want to blur it, use a surface blur. And now you will see you have the radius slider, okay? 
and you have the threshold slider. Okay, and just play with those two sliders, see what, what you want to have as the final result and press OK. Okay, and wait for Shrub to do that. And then you need to merge all layers together because you actually need this gray, uh, gray effect, gray layer as a separate layer, but here it's inverted layer. Then you need to shift control alt E, oops, sorry, shift control alt E or shift command option in a Mac. And then you will have this layer as a separate one. And again, you will put it on, for example, linear light blending mode. And let me show you before and after, before and after. You can duplicate that control command J a few times. And as you can see, there are no halo effect around and the image is really, really over sharp, over sharp like so. All right, this is good. This is maybe too much. Okay. And that's the method that I don't use so often, but I use it from time to time. And it's good to know a few different techniques uh, to sharpen images because some images are better to sharp on one way, some images are better to sharp on another way, etc. So let me show you another way of sharpening. And we will go back to this image again. And we will use filter and let me see camera row, camera row filter. And this method, of course, need camera row that it's from Photoshop CC and above. Everything that is CS6 and below will not have this camera row option, right? You will go here to third option to those triangles. Details is the same icon as the sharpening tool in Photoshop that we used. Okay, and you have four sliders here uh, with the sharpening uh, dialog box, right? First is the amount. If it is the same thing, let me, let me zoom this a little bit. Okay, first is the amount, zero, it's zero. All the way up, you will see. Radius is the same like radius in that uh, unsharp mass dialog box. And the details, it's how much details will be affected. If you go all the way up, all the small details here, as you can see on the nose, all the small details will be affected. If you go down, it will only be the higher details, these bigger details affected. And the masking part, it's really nice and handy. If you hold Alt or Option key and drag this slider, everything what is black will not be affected by sharpening. And now the background, I don't want the background and these darker parts here of the nose and of the, of the chin here, because if I sharpen that, I will increase the noise in those parts. And that's handy because now if I press P on the keyboard, only this part of the skin is sharpened. This part of the, and this darker part, it's not sharpen at all. And when you're finished, of course, just press OK. And that's it. You have image sharpen a little bit. That's nice. Of course, you can always add a layer mask on your sharpening layer to affect only some portion of the image that you want. For example, let's go back on this cute little dog image and let's use one of the layers that the sharpening is applied and press and apply layer mask on that. Invert layer mask, control command I and use a white brush. Let's let's use a really soft one like so and maybe 50% or 20% or any opacity you want and just sharpen the eyes here. Okay, maybe maybe a little bit here of the nose. I don't know. It's out of focus, but maybe you want to sharp this or maybe you want to sharp the paws here. And that's nice. Okay, this part only maybe 10% opacity and sharpen a little bit this part here. And let me see before and after, before and after only the selected parts are sharpened. And that's basically it. There are of course few more methods how you can sharp your images in Photoshop. And for example, you can use some plugins for that. I will show you one that I really love to use. It's a Topaz Lab. Let's go here and use this goose or duck. I don't know what is it. Uh, image and let's go to the filter Topaz Lab and go to the detail tree. Right now the plugin will be loaded and it will analyze the image and you have a lot of presets here. You can uh, sh let, let me zoom this a little bit. Uh, where is the zoom plus plus Oof, too much like so. Okay, you have really, really nice presets here. How you can sharpen your images and this Topaz filter, it's doing really, really great job. Or you can go here, uh, sharpen small details or sharper to boost small details or medium details or large details. You can choose what part of the image you want to sharpen, for example, or you, you can 
decrease the small details or medium details to go opposite of sharp to blur it a little bit okay and it's really nice and when you're finished of course you press ok and this is before and after before and after all right guys that's it for today i hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new out of it have fun experiment and find your preferred method for sharpening the images and don't over sharp them Sometimes it's better to sharpen it less than more and sometimes it's better to sharpen only some part of the images, for example only the eyes or the lips, some parts that you want to catch the spectator's eyes first. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye. You're still here? Go and sharp something, you just learned how to do it. See you next week, bye bye.